Hey guys, it's Alicia here with Minnesota Bit Friends. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about Obsolora from Insight. I want to first say that I'm not a medical professional. I'm not a doctor. I am a person who has had vitiligo for 45 years. I do not work for Insight. I am a volunteer in the vitiligo community. I am not being paid for any of this. This is strictly talking about the journey that it took to get Absolora and what is happening in the world. So um, I also will have Loretta Bush on here, one of our members from uh, Minnesota Vit Friends, uh, who also works in a dermatology clinic who helped me obtain this drug and what it's like, so, and what it takes. Um, I've never done treatment for vitiligo. I've only ever, the only thing I've ever done for vitiligo is used makeup, that's it. Um, just remember this is a process persistence and patience is needed in this. Um, I wanted to come on here and tell you what it took and um, I'm gonna play a video from Loretta that we did an interview and talked about what her steps were to get me this drug. Again, she works for a dermatology clinic. And then I'm, also I'm Loretta Bush and I am a person with vitiligo as well. And I'm a member of the Vitiligo Friends. And I've been a person with vitiligo for about 17 years. And me and Alicia met through Minnesota Vitiligo Friends and we've been friends ever since. So, and here we are talking to you guys about our vitiligo. Yay. So yeah. Very good. So I'm talking to Loretta because she works in a dermatology clinic and knows the ins and outs of working with insurance companies, working with doctors, working with different types of drugs. And I reached out to her when I was trying to get the newly FDA approved drug for vitiligo, Absolora. Um, and I knew she would be a good um, person to work with. So um, we're going to kind of talk about what it took to actually get it in my hands. And it was a journey. <laughs> it was a danger journey. journey. That's the journey. <laughs> yep. And so, you're going to hear us say this over and over again. It takes yes. patience and persistence. That's the two key patience words. Patience and persistence. That's exactly what we're going to talk about. Yep. But in case you guys haven't heard, Absolera um, is a new drug that is on the market that actually is the first FDA cleared um, medication with an indication for vitiligo. So Alicia and I are going to talk about this medication and what it took to get it and maybe um, is this right for you, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So Alicia, I'll let you start with how you kind of came to me with this. Okay. Yes. So um, again, we've been working with Insight with the vitiligo community um, to get the word out about this new drug. This was, again, the first ever FDA drug to approve, improve vitiligo. And it that was a journey in itself. Um, so we were really excited to be able to talk about this with the community. But what it came down to, I've never done treatment in my life. Um, and I was intrigued to see, to, to be the voice for people that maybe don't know how to do this. And so um, that's part of our, our advocacy that we do for vitiligo. And so I thought, okay, you know what? I'm gonna try this because I wanna see what it takes. And so um, I, had, I had seen on Facebook, somebody had tried um, to do it through like their telehealth. I logged on to my insurance company. I have a, a, you know, a profile on my insurance uh, website. And sure enough, they offered um, a visit you can do online. And so I thought, okay, this could be cool. So it was $50 to do an online visit. All I did was I filled out my information. I took photos of my face and my arms and um, said, I want, and I found a doctor in my area clicked on it, sent a message and said, I would really be interested in trying to, to start this obsolete or what do I, what can I do? And here's my pictures. I have that I go gave them my background and whatever. It was all online. I didn't even go into the office. Um, they, they went through a little bit of my history and said, yep, we can prescribe that for you. And I was like, sweet. So it's gonna be said, great. It was gonna be so great. <laughs> so great. I was, I'm like, that was easy. So easy. <laughs> so they sent it to my pharmacy and uh -huh. I went to go pick, I went to it popped up on my pharmacy stuff, twenty four hundred dollars. And I thought, okay, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> So I called my good friend Loretta and said, yeah. now what? <laughs> uh -huh. okay, and that's so, where we start. So, so this is the start of the journey. So patient gets the prescription and thinks, oh, this is great. I have this prescription. 
It is the only FDA cleared medication for vitiligo. And you're thinking as a patient, I'm 100% going to get this drug because there's nothing else out there. And the company is telling you, yes, you're going to get this drug because every pharma, every insurance company is aware of it. So Alicia gets the, yes, you have a copay of $2,500 for this wonderful 30 gram tube. And she says, I don't think so. Which meant that it was it was covered, but under a tier that was very high for her. Because, you know, we have these tier programs. And sometimes we're finding it's not covered at all. So I said, okay, Alicia, here's what we have to do. Let's send in a prior authorization. And if you guys are not familiar with that, when a drug is not covered by your insurance company and a doctor really wants you to have that drug, we can send a request to your insurance company to prior authorize for us to be able to prescribe that drug for you and to get an override for them to say they will cover it. So this is a process in itself because it takes a lot of paperwork depending on the insurance company. So we send in the prior authorization and your insurance company has a time period in which they have to answer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can say, we have two weeks to answer you, or we have a month to answer you. But whatever that time period is, the insurance company then responds and they can respond either yes or no. Alicia's insurance company responded quite fast, which I was surprised. They responded in what, uh, just a few days. And they said, no, <laughs> they just said, no. Nope. And so then Alicia, go ahead. Then you called me, right? And said, yeah, uh, what do I need to do? Because this is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> me and heck, I'm paying $2,400 for a tube of cream. <laughs> yes. And there was the confusion of Alicia's part where, but it's covered, right? So, yeah. so there's the confusion of, but they're telling me it's covered and they're saying it's going to pay that they're going to pay for it, then what does this mean? And they're denying it. Yeah. And I said to Alicia, I said, okay, this is the fun part with the insurance companies. And it's almost like a game that we play. It's like going back and forth, the balls in your court, the balls in my court. So I said to Alicia, okay, so now the balls in their court, they said no. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can get you on a program. Aha. So Insight Care, um, the makers of Obsolera have a program, a patient assistant program, which is an awesome program because they know that pharmaceutical or that your insurance company isn't necessarily going to pick this up right away. It's going to take some time for all of the insurance companies to get on board, but they want the patients to have access to this medication. Now, let me just tell you, this program, you have to go to your dermatologist to get the paperwork to do this program. Your internist is not gonna have this. Your pediatrician is not going to have this. You must go to your dermatologist to do this. Mm -hmm. So I'm at the dermatologist. I say, okay, Alicia, great. I'm gonna sign you up for this program with Insight Care because you got denied. They say you have to be denied by your insurance company to go to get the Insight Care. So I fill out the wonderful form, right, Alicia? And I send Alicia her part because there's a part of the form that she must fill out. So here we go, part two, okay? Actually part three, because part one was the original prescription. Yep. <laughs> part two was the denial. Yep. Part three is the Insight Program. Okay, so here we go. All right. So now we fill out the information for the insight program and we send it to them. And now we wait for their response. Now, how now how many weeks are we in now? Um, one or two. We're at, we're at least in week two. Yeah, I think we're in week we're, two. We're in at least week two. And I'm surprised because your insurance is responding fast. Yeah. And so that's so I'm going to say this is not this is faster than it normally would have took. And Alicia thought this was taking a long time, but <laughs> I know that this takes longer, which is crazy. But I know that sometimes it could be, we could be at week four right now, yeah. but we're at week two, right? Yep. So Insight Care responds back and says, great. So we can't give this medication to Alicia, even though she got denied, um, because there's one more step. And then, so I call Insight Care, which also takes time. And so now you're talking 
a half hour on the phone back and forth in between patients. And this is what it takes when you're going to these companies. And so I finally get someone who's very knowledgeable and I say, okay, this is very confusing to me working in healthcare because you said once Alicia was denied, all she had to do was fill out this form and that you would give her a free tube. Mm -hmm. And they said, yes, but there's a caveat to that. And what that was is that Alicia needed to be denied one more time. Okay, oh. so another, okay, so. Okay, I didn't know that another part. Another thing that your insurance company might do to you when you're trying to get a medication covered. So when you first apply for the prior authorization, that denial is a denial. The patient then has a right to do something called an appeal. Mm. There's an appeal process. So Insight Care said, Alicia now needs to do an appeal and have her appeal denied. So now we're week three, end of week three, by the time I have all this information. So then I call Alicia and say, okay, we got one more process. So now I have the original piece of paper from her insurance company from the original denial. Mm. And now we need an appeal. Now, this is the process that doctors kind of get really frustrated with because it's the time consuming part. So now I had to have the doctor write a letter on Alicia's behalf. And in this letter had to explain all the different reasons of why he felt this particular medication was for Alicia and that he wanted her to have this medication. So now I take that letter and I send that letter to Alicia's insurance company. And now we wait. And once again, your insurance company has a time period in which they are allowed to respond to an appeal. Alicia's insurance company told me they had one month, meaning don't call us and bug us. We have a month. But of course, I called and bugged them. <laughs> so I called them after about another week. And I said, I'm just following up on Alicia's appeal. Now, I must say most places don't have enough time to do this. So a lot of places are going to wait for that month for that appeal letter to come. So now the patient would have been two months in, mm -hmm. really, from the time of the initial prescription to the response to the appeal. So now I take the original denial, the answer to the appeal, and I was going to take the original denial, the answer to the appeal, and the application and send them to Insight Care to get Alicia covered. But <laughs> here's what happened, right, Alicia? To our surprise, all right? So you can go ahead and tell them what happens. What? That they approved it? Or? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, all of a sudden, yep, you're approved. <laughs> yeah. So the crazy thing about this is that. We were waiting for the, the denial of the appeal so yep. that I could get Alicia's medication through Insight Care. But to our unbelief, her insurance company said, okay, we're going to cover it. And we're going to cover it at tier one, mm -hmm. meaning that Alicia only has to pay her normal copay to get this medication for an entire year. Mm -hmm. Surprised. Yes. So I say that to say this. Be patient, right? Be yep. persistent because your insurance might actually approve it after the appeal because mm -hmm. of what they know. Um, but that takes a lot of diligence on behalf of you and your dermatologist. And if it's not covered and the appeal is denied, then your dermatologist can work on getting you the medication through the Insight Care program for free tubes quite complicated right absolutely absolutely and you so talk about why insight is so wanting you to get that free tube why are they so willing to send people free tubes then because once you've gotten the free tube you're considered being treated once a patient is being treated with a medication and it's found to be effective then your insurance company is kind of obligated to now cover that medication for you so insight notes once a medication once you get this little tube in your hand 
and it begins to work for you, if it does, and you're excited about it, then your dermatologist can then write that prescription after you've done with all your free tubes to say this work and now your insurance company is probably going to cover it for you. So that is why Insight wants you to get this because once you start using it, and it works for you, you're more than likely going to have it covered by your insurance plan. So it benefits them to give you the free tube. Absolutely. 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 So it is, um, it is, um, it's quite the little experience working with insurance companies and appeals and prior authorizations and getting thing, things covered. And sometimes they're going to want you to um, try other medications before trying this. Um, and yeah, and I'm just going to say this, an Opsolera may not be the answer for everybody. So let's just talk about that. Yep. Um, everyone is going to have a different response. Alicia and I both started Opsolera. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you about my experience, but then Alicia is going to tell you about hers because once again, your dermatologist is going to determine whether it's good for you or not. Mm -hmm. And just like all medications out there, it may work really great for some people, but not so great for others. Yep. And then there's combinations of things, right? There's combinations of things that you can use with Opsolera. Like you could be on Opsolera and doing lights, or you could be on Opsolera and doing eczema, or you could just be on Opsolera, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you about my experience on it. And I've been on it for going on three months now, I would think, Alicia. Mm -hmm. And then Alicia can tell you about hers. So I started with the Opsolera on the samples because, you know, working in dermatology, I got that little sample tube and I was on it right away. <laughs> and the dermatologist that I work for, who was my dermatologist, said, yes, Loretta, go ahead and start it. Now, the most difficult pigment, and those of you with little Lego may know this, hands are very difficult to repigment. Um, so I started using the Opsolera on my hands twice a day, but I'm also doing light and I have started to see some little spots here and there. I haven't seen like any great, wow, oh my God, but I do see some things, but like I said, I'm also doing lights. Mm. So is it the combination of the lights and the Opsolera, I don't know. Is it just the lights? I don't know. But I am getting a little bit of response on my hands. Mm -hmm. And then go ahead, Alicia, you want to tell us about your experience now? Yeah, so I, um, I have been on it for a month and a week, maybe. And I have responded very positively. Um, and you can't see it as much here, but and I'll share before and after. But I always had a video goatee is what I always call it. And I've had it since like third grade. Um, my pigment ended here before, and now it's like here and I have all spotting here. I'm getting spotting here, like pigment spotting. So I've responded like crazy. And it's in, and, and again, I'm only a month into it and they say, don't expect results in a month. Um, <laughs> Yeah, most people, it's going to take at least three months to see any kind of response. So yeah. the fact that I'm responding is is crazy. And what's awesome is I've had vitiligo for 45 years. <laughs> so it's not something that you have to be a year into it. It can be somebody who's had it for decades. And, and that's what's so like exciting about it, because I never, ever thought I would get any kind of color back. So um, it, it, it's crazy and, and it's easy to use and, and, um, doesn't take a lot of time. And, um, and I, I'm not doing the light treatment, um, cause I don't have, you know, all that stuff at home or mm -hmm. work in an office where it's handy. Um, I have gotten a little <laughs> bit of sun, so I've been trying to like, you know, get a little bit of sun just to maybe help stimulate it. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm, you know, obviously not a sun goddess either and out there all the time because I will burn. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, well, well, well. Yeah, that's what, that's what I <laughs> so, but that's, yeah, my experience with it so far and it's been really positive. Yeah. So I just wanted you guys to know that if you get it, 
you know, just be patient and and know that it may, it's not a miracle. It's not a miracle drug at all. So it's not like, oh my God, this is what we've all been waiting for all of our lives. So, you know, we still have that. We have to accept what we have, right? Alicia, it's still going to be about acceptance and loving yourself and the skin that you're in, no matter if you get it or don't get it. And I always say, I don't get my hopes up too much, right? Because you never do know. Right. Um, but when Alicia sent me her pictures, I just lit up. I was like, oh my God, I was so excited for you yeah. because I was, I couldn't believe how, what the response was so fast for you. Yeah. Um, and I showed the doctor and even his eyes got big and he was really? like, whoa, because out of all the people that we put on it, you responded the fastest. Um, so like I said, not for everybody, maybe you right. may get some pigment like Alicia, you may just after three months, get a little spot here and there, like yep. I did, but what we wanted you guys to know that it's out there, it's available to you, but it is a process and it is going to be a process. Be patient with your dermatologist. Um, it's not their fault that they're not hearing back from your insurance company. They will do the best that they can to help you guys get it. Um, but yeah, go see your dermatologist. Like I said, it's very difficult to do these things in an internal medicine office. If you're really trying to do things like this, it's best to go to your specialty. Yeah, so, yeah absolutely. That so, being said. Um, so when somebody, you know, they go to their doctor, they get, they get the prescription and they're following up. Who is the best person to follow up with at a dermatology clinic? I mean, obviously you're not going to be talking to the doctor. Um, oh, um, when you follow up to say, Hey, where is my prescription? What's going on? Yeah. I always say this, leave a message for your doctor's care team. Okay. Um, because you know, your doctor is seeing patients and it's his care team. It's our job to do the follow-up on where's your medication, what's going on and to give him the updates. So leave a message with your care team, but also know that your care team is caring for hundreds of patients. Yeah. And just, let's just say right now on my desk are about 15 PAs for this right now. So uh, yeah, so and every time we write one, I get more to do. Um, so just be patient. We, your doctor's office will try to get it to you, but patience and diligence. It takes diligence on our part and patience on your part. Yeah. So yep. yeah, but it's coming and in one day, right? One day after it's been on the market for a while, we know that it'll be probably covered on all plans. Yep. But this is what happens when all drugs are new and they come to the market. Yep. Insurance companies take a while to get on board. Yeah. So yep. this well, we're is not just, even six months into this. I mean, it, yes, it was exactly this is very lot. new. Yeah, yeah, very new. So yeah, but we sure. just wanted to share this with you guys because we know that you're looking for it. Yeah. And we just wanted to share with you this is how you're gonna get it. So we really do hope this was helpful. Yeah. So yep. thanks, thank guys. you so much. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Insight. So insight, Loretta and I talked about this on Insight Cares. Um, this is their website, insightcares.com. You are obviously a dermatology patient. Um you are going to be for non-segmental vitiligo. Um, here are some great things for um, people to get help with their vitiligo. They have a copay savings plan that, um, you know, if you're, say you, your insurance improves it, um, but the, the price is way high. So say like, yes, we'll cover it, but it's still going to cost you a thousand dollars, right? Um, if you, you can get a copay savings card through Insight, um, and take it to your pharmacy. Um, you can also download it and they will cover up to, I believe, $1,900 to get you this tube. Um, it says here in the fine print somewhere. Um, so just remember that it doesn't cover it completely. Um, but it will cover some of it. So keep that in mind, but that's the copay savings card. They also have this commercial access program. If you have been denied by your insurance company, and Loretta talks about this, here is um, Insight Cares to help talk about how you can get it done. Um, and again, you have to work with your doctor. You have to work with your insurance company. There are lots of steps, like Loretta said, but this is some information you can have here. Um, they also have a payment assistant program for people that are a certain income limit. 
Um, and it will have you, it has right here, the eligibility income, what you would need to make um, um, to get it covered. Um, this would also be like Medicare doesn't get it covered. Um, this would be a way where you could get um, maybe some payment or whatever. So one thing I want to show you too, and this isn't, um, you want to go, when you're on the Insight Cares, go to the dermatology patients or to the healthcare professional too. You could bring this to your doctor if you want. Click on Obsolora, but your doctor will also have this, but sometimes it's, you know, helpful to have them. Um, so they have the same type of thing, right? Look at here copay assistance but here's all the forms that they need so right here in the very very first place what you need to send into insight is the enrollment form this is what the doctors will fill out um and then you have to um they sign it i think you sign it and this is what they would actually send into insight so if um you can email this to your doctor or they might have access or just send them the website, but that's what they need to fill out. They also have, again, a letter of medical necessity. They have a letter of appeal and here's an appeal to get an additional tube. So like Loretta said, Obsolora and Insight wants to get you this medication and they want to get it in your hands. And this is the, the forms and everything you'll need for that. Hey guys, uh, so here is my Obsolora routine. Um, first, take off any makeup that you have. Okay. So I put it all over my face because that's what I'm trying to repigment. Um, so I start with that um, and kind of just, whoops, um, just put it on and massage it in. So I'm also going to put it here because now I'm now that I'm having luck with my skin, I want to repigment. All right, that's it. So now I'm going to wash my hands. Um, but it's it's a little greasy, but not bad. It, it just feels like I put on facial moisturizer. Is all it feels like. Um, it does not itch. It doesn't hurt my eyes. Um, the only side effects I've had is a mild acne. So I am getting a little bit of acne here and I had a couple pimples here and that was it. That's all I've had so far. So it's, again, it's lightweight. I put it on at night and I do it when I get up in the morning. I take my shower or get ready in the morning and I put it on and then I wait to put my makeup on for a while because it is a little greasy so if you're a person that wears makeup you might want to try to find a different time to do it or whatever or just know that you're gonna have to wait a little while to put your makeup on but that's it bye